today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to create this cool burn-in effect, and we'll use it in a simple image gallery, all right? Let me just scrub through real quick and show you that this image here is going to do like an overexposure burn out, all right, to full white, and then the next image is going to burn in. What I really like about this effect is that even though the images are static, uh, you know, there's some motion going on. If you concentrate on this area here as things burn in and burn out we have these white areas that are growing so um, in real time I just really love this effect so we're gonna build it quickly on its own and then I'll show you how to throw it into a gallery that loops let's go all right so before we get into building a fold gallery I want to just do this effect in isolation so in my HTML I have a single image inside of a gallery div and in my JavaScript I just have some code commented out for dev tools. So this effect we can show in just a single tween. So I'm gonna create a tween with the name of burn. I'm gonna do a gsap.from2, okay? Since I'm going to be using CSS filters for this, I don't have any CSS filters set in my CSS for my uh, image here. So I need gsap to know what our filter settings are gonna be when we start and end. So the target of this tween is gonna be my image and my from value is going to be a filter property. And as a string, I'm gonna pass in the brightness function and I'm going to use a value of four and that's going to be fairly bright. And I might wanna spell brightness with an R. And then I'm going to put my two values in and what I wanna do is just go to a brightness of one, which is the normal brightness, okay? So with just this one tween here, I can turn on GS DevTools and let's see what it does. All right, that happened fairly quick, but with GS DevTools, we can scrub back to the beginning and you can see that it starts super bright and then it's going to become less bright as it goes to a brightness of one, all right? Now, if you pay attention to like the brightness up here, it almost creates the illusion of movement even though it's a static image, all right? But we have this sort of motion of the brightness going away and fading into the actual shape of the clouds, all right? And I just love this effect. Now, what I wanna do is have it start out fully white, all right? And in order to achieve that, I'm also going to add a low contrast. So I'm gonna start with a contrast of zero, and I'm going to animate to a contrast of one over here. Again, contrast one and brightness one are the default values. So let's run this. Ah, you probably don't notice any difference, all right? You know what I can do? I can just slow down uh, GS DevTools a little bit to half speed. We can play. And there you go. Uh, but really, if I go all the way back to the beginning, you'll see now that I get that full white that I was going for. But watch this, as I scrub slowly ahead, all this time here that I'm scrubbing back and forth, there's really very little change in this image at all that I can see. It's a pretty much imperceptible, and it's not about until the playhead gets to about here or a time of 0.12 or a tenth of a second that we can start to see some of the detail of the image. Now, I really don't wanna be staring at just this white bit here with no change whatsoever. So what I've done is I've played with this contrast value a little bit. And if I just start at 0.5 instead of zero, let's run. What you're gonna see now is if I drag the playhead from the start right about here, we start seeing the uh, detail of the image coming in with some color, all right? And that's only 0.2 seconds in, all right? So we get the effect happening much quicker and we're not staring at just full white. So basically what we're going to do is for each image, we're gonna start at like this full white, we're gonna burn in with the contrast and brightness, and then we're gonna hold for a bit and then we're going to burn it back out and then burn in another image. So let me show you how we'll set this up as a multi-image gallery. All right, so I have a starter file for the gallery. Inside my gallery div, I now have like nine different images, all right? And for the CSS for this gallery, all of the images, where are you, have their position absolute, all right? So inside this gallery div, all of the images are stacked right on top of each other, okay? So you need to know that. 
And I also want to show you that the gallery itself, which is the wrapper for all of those images, has its visibility set to hidden. Because what are we going to do? We're going to have some JavaScript run that shows us the gallery once all the images are loaded, okay? So in our JavaScript here, I just want to show you that we have images set up here, and we're basically making an array out of every image that's in the gallery. Um, I'm going to create a timeline, and then I have an init function where some stuff is going to go on, uh, but I want to show you that I have a window event listener that on load, we're going to run the init function, all right? We just wanna make sure all those images are available before we display anything. So let's take a look at that init function here. And what we're going to do is tell the gallery that its scale is going to be one and its auto alpha is gonna be one, all right? So that's gonna avoid any flashes of unstyled content as we've discussed many times before. Now the scale one here is there because you know what? As I'm working in CodePen here, I can't really see enough of the code and the image gallery as I'm working here. So I'm gonna use this scale setting here just for the purpose of this demo to set the scale of my gallery down to 0 0.5, all right? Um, the real focus here is on just the mechanics of what's happening, not making the gallery the perfect size or anything like that. So now the next time I run, once all the images are loaded, you just see them at this smaller size, which gives me enough wiggle room to focus on the code. And being that the gallery in the CSS has its visibility set to hidden, we don't see any flash of the images coming in all large. We just see it at the perfect size as set here in the init function. Now in the init function, we also have a for each loop so that we can run through or loop through every image and perform an animation on it. And the animations that we create are going to be put inside this timeline that I've set up outside of the init function and outside of the loop. So in addition to showing the gallery or making it visible as soon as the page is ready, I also wanna make sure all the images have their opacity set to zero because since they're stacked all on top of each other, I only wanna be showing one image at a time. So once the gallery is ready to go, I'm also going to do a gsap.set on all the images in that array, and I'm going to set their opacity to zero. Then, using this loop here, I'm going to create a set and a tween for each image, okay? So inside this loop, the first thing I'm going to do with the first image is I'm going to tell the timeline to set the current image to have opacity of one, and then once it's visible, which is gonna happen instantly, I can then do the tween that I need to do for the brightness. So let me just paste that code here so you don't have to watch me stumble through typos, all right? It's just like we had in the other lesson, but here the target is the actual image that we're grabbing from this iteration of the loop, and we're gonna do a from to tween starting with a contrast of 0 0.5, brightness of six, and go to a contrast of one and a brightness of one. All right, so with all this stuff in place, I should be able to now have every image animating in from that super bright setting. So let's run. There we go. All right, the timing's a little bit out of whack, but you can see each image burns in in sequence, all right? Once an image burns in, the next one has its opacity instantly set to one, and it's going to be literally stacked on top of the previous image, and then it's gonna go from that super bright white to its normal state, all right? So just now with that one line of code in that loop, we get this pretty cool effect. But what I wanna do is once the image burns in, I want it to burn out before the next image burns in. So one way of handling this is that with this single tween here, I could say that you're going to repeat once, we'll set yo-yo to true, and we can have a repeat delay of, let's just say uh, 0 0.8 right now. So what that's gonna do is burn the thing in, wait 0 0.8 seconds, and then do a yo-yo going the other way. So let's watch that. Aha, and so now you can see that effect is a lot less jarring. Now you may be saying, Carl, that doesn't seem like a repeat delay of 0.8. It seems like I'm waiting quite a while uh, for this to happen here. Well, down in GS DevTools here, we have the uh, time scale set to 0 0.5.
So actually with it slow, I kind of like it. Let's just uh, go back to the beginning. You can see we burn in, we wait too long, it burns out, and then the next image burns in. So we can really sort of appreciate what's happening here as it's running sort of in slow motion. Now I do love this, but nothing's worse than waiting for an animation to end, all right? And it could just be a little bit too long here, that transition. I like my transitions a lot zippier. So let me set the uh, time scale to one, and then we can at least just see how it is working with uh, a time scale of one. All right, it's still pretty cool, but you know, I like to get a little bit granular with the timing and I can be a little picky. So although this does work, um, I kind of have been experimenting and I want the burn out to actually happen quicker than the burn in, all right? So it's gonna be subtle, but it's an improvement that I like and you can play with it yourself, all right? So instead of having a repeating tween here, I'm just gonna paste in a tween right after it. Again, you don't need to see me stumble through typing. And once we've burned in, I'm then gonna tell the image that it's going to burn out to that high contrast, high brightness. And we're gonna use a shorter duration of 0.2, and we'll use a position parameter to offset the timing. So let's give this a run -a And now you can see we burn in and the burn out. Again, it's gonna be a little bit subtle, but I just like that the image goes away quickly. You can still see the burn, and we can sort of appreciate the burn in a little bit more. Again, it's really what you like. You know, you can always tweak this stuff, but here you'll see that we're gonna burn out really quick, and then we're gonna burn in from that full white, all right? So um, another thing that I really enjoyed messing with was a little bit of easing, which again is gonna be subtle and maybe you don't notice the difference, um, but I do after playing with this stuff for a while. So when the image is going to initially burn in, I'm gonna set an ease of power two, which without specifying anything else is gonna be a slight ease out. And when we're going to burn out, I'm gonna use an ease of power two dot in. So it's gonna start just a little bit slow, go quick, and then we're going to quickly bring in the burn and slow it down uh, when the next image comes in. So on the way out, here you can see it at full size. Hopefully you appreciate this burn effect and you wanna add it to your projects. Again, a lot of these changes that I made may be very subtle and they're just little tweaks that I've enjoyed, all right? Uh, but with this two tween setup, you can change the duration and the ease on the in and out and have a little bit of fun with it, all right? So please make your own gallery, drop in your own images. If you make something cool, let me see what you made. Have a great week. Unleash the power of JavaScript animation with the Greensock animation platform known as GSAP3. Learn animation tools that power over 9 million websites, the majority of award-winning websites, and cutting-edge online ad experiences. In fact, all the animation you've seen so far was created using standards-based HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with the Greensock animation platform. The secret to animations like this is Greensock's timeline, which allows you to program complex sequences with ease. Greensock's dev tools gives you unprecedented control over your animation while you're developing. You can scrub to or jump to any part of your animation. You can slow it down and really get a sense for all the effects that are happening. If you want to start adding next generation animation to your websites, check out my course, GSAP3 Express. You can join for free and I'll get you up and running quickly with the most powerful parts of the GSAP API.